It is here where the test begins. A test to find out what you're made of. The distance is daunting. It will push you physically, mentally, and emotionally to limits never before achieved. As you look down on the start, the questions creep in. Do I have what it takes? Am I strong enough? Can I finish what I started? There are over a thousand reasons why they have come to Cheju Island, South Korea. However, they are all united by one goal. Iron Man. Iron Man. Iron Man. Swim, 3.8 kilometers. Bike, 180 kilometers. Run, 42.2 kilometers. Iron Man. There isn't a harder day in sport. Race morning, most are up and ready by 3 a.m. Some don't even sleep. This year, Standard Chartered Ironman Korea has invited athletes from around the globe to represent their countries in the first calling of the nation's challenge. Cancer survivor and professional triathlete Brent Sheldrake signed up early to represent New Zealand. Austrian Hubert Hammerl is here to improve on his second place finish from last year. For Australia, race favorite Jason Shortis is here competing in his 38th Ironman and looking for his fifth title. Representing Czech Republic, Teresa Massel, who now lives in Canada with her husband. She is the women's favorite, but just barely. 37-year-old psychiatrist Julie Kerwin will be a challenge for Teresa. Julie proudly represents her country in the nation's challenge. Hiromi Sato is here for Japan. While another Australian, Joanne Bennett, is looking focused. Some race for their countries, some for themselves. Tom Ocker has his reasons. South African Alec Riddle is racing to remember and he's fully aware of what lies ahead. Well, I'll tell you what, we certainly have some testing conditions. If you look at that swim in the wind. The swim is a concern as the athletes migrate down to Chungmung Beach. Everyone takes notice of the conditions. Today might be tougher than expected, but this is an Ironman. Assessing what's to come, over a thousand athletes gather. Some test the waters, others prepare mentally. For many, this will be the biggest physical accomplishment of their lives. For others, it's simply another challenge in life. A feather in the cap, so to speak. Gregory Burns, 48. As a painter, I oftentimes start a painting without a clear direction of where I'm going, what I'm going to do, and I just start into it. And sometimes when, I don't, when I'm training, I don't really want to get in the pool and swim. But I know if I get in and just get over the hump, I'll probably finish the whole workout. I know if I take the first step, the second one will probably be easier. So there's that momentum that you build after starting. You know, I think we all have notions or ideas or a feeling of what we can and can't do and what we need to do and um, to me that's what challenge really is is when you come up against something that you you know you're meant to do and if you know you're meant to do it then you have to do it have a good trip. one of the most limiting things is just not not even trying i got polio when i was a year old i think 
the way I grew up was pretty much as normal as it could be since my mother was very uh, proactive and very, uh, she wanted me to grow up like anybody else. So she didn't really baby me and she didn't keep me from getting knocked around, which I think is good. She let me fall down and do things that, um, that made me stronger. And I think that was probably what made the big difference in the long run was that um, left to my own devices, I figured out the way to do it, what I had to do. I started competing as a, a Paralympian in 1977, and I had a 27-year swimming career. I swam all over the world and garnered uh, five world records and a bunch of gold and silver medals in three different Paralympics, um, Barcelona, Atlanta, and Sydney. And um, I've done a couple of marathons. I did one, the Honolulu Marathon, on crutches. Uh, came in dead last, did it in 16 hours. But I've done a lot of things, but I've never kind of put all the pieces together at one time, and I think it'll be really pretty cool to to do all three at once and and just live to tell the tale, you know. Iron Man, you know, it kind of has a nice ring to it. It brings tears to my eyes sometimes when I think of doing things that I know I can do and know I want to do, and I think that's part of it. Swimming is Greg Byrne's strongest discipline. Today, the waters are rough and his talents will be required. For the athletes without Greg's talent, apprehension grows. Looks of determination have changed to pensive stares. Concerns are high. The 10 minute delay to assess the conditions is over. An incoming storm help makes the decision for race officials a lot easier. What's best for the safety of the athletes is decided. Unfortunately, the swim has been canceled. So for the 2006 Standard Chartered Ironman Korea, we now move to a duathlon format. Now we understand many of you are disappointed and you want to swim and we do this uh, for the safety of everyone. And this is our Ironman race today. So we look forward to you being happy with the changes and moving forward as we are all competing in this race today. With the swim canceled, strategies have been scrapped. Swim advantage or disadvantage has been wiped clean. As they change out of their wetsuits, new game plans are constructed in the heads of the athletes. They now will start the day on their bikes. Professional athletes one by one will lead the start at five second intervals. They seem unfazed, almost relaxed. Korean Byung Hoon Park, wearing number one, earns the honor of going first. But in this format, not much of an advantage. Number one at the end, and call yourself champion. Next up, the professional women. There are no favorites now. This is anybody's race. One by one, they roll out. 180 kilometers on the bike. Then a marathon. Wearing number two, Hamerl jumps out front to take the lead. But Byung Hoon Park is right there just a few meters behind. With the most experience in Ironman, Jason Shortest keeps it a close race. For now, he has no plans of chasing anyone. Chang Jae Yao, not the only Korean in this race, is up front and in the pack as well. Brent Sheldrake, relaxed and keeping his form, has an eye on the group ahead while American Paul Fritchie starts with a steady pace. Starting in 10th place, Scott Green has 50 seconds to make up. He is determined to get to the front. Fellow Australian Joe Bennett is already there, leading the women's race. Julie Kerwin hammers away and passes Hiromi Sato. Not interested in what others are doing at the moment, 
Caroline Cole settles into her own rhythm, now in fourth place. While Teresa Missell seems to be biding her time, keeping an eye up ahead, waiting for her chance. Emerald's lead grows as Byung-Hoon Park loses ground to hard-charging Scott Green. Losing ground and his second-place position. Also losing ground, Jason Shortis, but he makes quick work of his problem. It will still cost him two minutes. With the ongoing trickle of starters, confusion is abound. Alec Riddle among them. Nobody was prepared for this type of start. Alec, ready or not, it's time to go. Among the confusion, some confidence. But Gregory Burns doesn't have time for any of it. Blind athlete Bill Davis is here for more than just personal reasons. He and his guide and tandem partner Jason McFall compete with a message and a smile. See you at the finish. Standard Chartered Ironman Korea is part of a continued effort to help create awareness regarding global blindness. Blind athlete Hein Wagner jumped at the chance to support that effort. He's here to compete in the blind relay. I'm very proud to be associated with, with the project um, called Seeing is Believing. Um, their goal is to restore eyesight to a million people in developing countries around the world by 2008. Um, and that is 100% in line with my personal philosophy of trying to make a difference to other people's lives. And that is really the, the driving force that um, got me onto the bicycle and um, in the first place. Hein and his... The normally hospitable Cheju Island has changed moods again. The athletes have had just about everything tossed at them. The morning started with heavy winds, rain, thunder and lightning. The swim canceled. The bike? Well, it couldn't be any harder. Monsoon-type downpours blister the face, impairing vision and making safe cornering near impossible. More athletes than usual fall by the side of the road and contemplate the remainder of the day. Hubert Hamrell continues his dominance. While Scott Green presses on through the weather. Cheng Jai Yao gets no hometown advantage. He fights his way through the weather and ahead of fellow Korean Byung Hoon Park. Even with the conditions and a flat, Jason Shortis is still determined. Hein Wagner's trust of his guide and riding partner, Yuri, remains unfazed. Look, don't get me wrong, the 180 kilometers in these conditions will not be easy. Uh, but yeah, we're gonna give it our very best. Yuri, my tandem partner, Yuri Kricher, he's um, that's here with me, he, a very experienced tandem rider. He's in South Africa, we've got a major race um, in, the in the Western Cape area, it's called the Argus. And he's won the tandem section, the mixed tandem section, three times. Um, very technical rider. Technical skills are imperative in these conditions. Gregory Burns knows all about it and what it will take to accomplish his goal. Rain in the face? That's nothing. It's kind of ridiculous, um, given the scenario, given the, 
the, uh, the bike part. It's 180 kilometers and I have to average 20 kilometers an hour for nine hours, which for someone on an able-bodied bike, it's something probably you could do in a heartbeat. But um, I'm, mine's a hand-powered bike and it's all upper body and I'm pulling myself up these hills. I go really well downhill, but going up, I, I get real slow. For me to complete what I need to do in the time period I need to complete is, is going to take a it's going to take a real good day. It all depends on how you define a good day. Most would say it couldn't be worse. Joanne Bennett, good day. She's in the lead and looking strong. Teresa Massell and Julie Kerwin side by side, with Miyumi Kobayashi coming on strong. Joe Bennett trying to increase her lead, but Julie Kerwin is vying to reel her in, but still cautious around the turns. Miyumi Kobayashi setting a blistering pace, but is it too hard too early? Or is Teresa Massell not on track? She drops to fourth overall. Hubert Hamrell, pushing hard early on, is now within sight of Scott Green. Is he slowing down or is Green speeding up? Whatever the reason, Green takes the lead, just like that. And Hamerl has to wonder, who else is back there? American Paul Fritchie, dancing to his own drum, settles into third. He's up where he wants to be, within striking distance. Young Hoon Park has been going back and forth with fellow Korean Chang Jae Yao. They are setting their own pace. Is it enough? And shortest. He hasn't had the chance to find his rhythm. Set his pace. Matters out of his control set him back again. Disappointed? Yes. But still supportive. Two flats. Yes. Oh. Yes. Oh. Yes. 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 Come on, mate. I'm trying to get you some, somebody right here. 70, 18, 20. With two flats at this point, and in this weather, who could blame him if he pulled out? With the heat index well over 39 degrees Celsius, athletes dig deep to tap the energy required of these conditions. Swim or no swim, this race is brutal and showing no signs of getting easier. Green is still pressing, trying to build on a lead between himself and Hubert Hamill. But Hamrell won't let that happen. Sitting back just meters behind, Hamrell is letting Green set the pace. The heat of the day can't seem to penetrate Fritchie as he continues his race. Behind him, the rest of the pack tries to maintain. Chang J. Yao is doing that. And keeping an eye on what's ahead. 60 more K and a marathon. What's not ahead for Byung Hoon Park is the finish line. A broken bike and no tech support. Race over. However, Shortus receives the technical support he needed, and with a mounting deficit, shows the heart of a champion and continues. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's the one. Your main. Yeah. 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 Thanks, Mark. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Mark. Yeah. Thanks, Mark. Yeah. 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 The other one was already no glue. So this is yeah, third, sure. third time. Oh my yeah. god. <laughs> hey, mate. Good luck. Thanks, man.
On the steepest, most isolated part of the bike course, the fog has blanketed the athletes, making it nearly impossible to know what or who is in front or behind. For Teresa Massell, her only concern is how to maintain her lead in the fog. There has been little room for error in this race. Kerwin and Bennett go back and forth on this uphill. It's Kerwin out of her saddle and making a move. Teresa is experienced enough to know what she has to do. Julie Kerwin does as well. She needs to separate herself from the pack, but Joanne Bennett will not let that happen. The hills are brutal, and Miyumi Kobayashi jumped out too early and appears to have wasted her energy. She's struggling on the climb. It's at this point where many of the athletes question their motivation and look for reasons. Some already know. The Iron Man. To become one of the proud that crosses that line, there's just one more stop. Transition two, no mercy. First to reach is Hubert Hamill. A meter behind, Scott Green. Green played catch up early and put in the fastest bike of the day at 4.45.29, but only 19 seconds faster than Hamill. That's not much of a concern. It's transition. Time to gauge your opponents and find out what you have left for the marathon. What Green and Hamill need is to move fast because the people chasing them are motivated and hungry to take their position up front. When the race is this close, seconds matter. No time to worry about what's behind. You have a marathon ahead. And that's Jason Shortis's best discipline, and everyone knows it. Green, the fastest transition. He's out first. Hamerl just a few steps behind. The marathon is officially underway. Next into transition is Paul Fricci. Korean Chang Jae Yao is in as well. The battle for third is on. Fricci makes quick work of transition. This is where experience is key. Going too hard, too early, and you're done. Find balance and you have a chance. Green and Hamerl are feeding off one another, or pushing each other. The payoff will reveal itself in the kilometers ahead. Fricci is out, grabbing third place for the moment. Not letting him out of sight, Chang Jiao follows. Brent Sheldrake is in, but in pain. A pinch nerve in his foot will slow him. Regardless, he will be an Iron Man today. The pace up front is blistering. Hamerl tries for the edge. Paul Fricci feels the heat and now has a new view. The back of Chang Jae Yao, who made his presence known quickly. Transition. Thought to be the only time you'd stop all day in an Iron Man. A place to make a change and gather your thoughts. Jason Shortis had plenty of time to think during his two flats. Now transition is just another obstacle.
For Hamerl and Green, they are testing each other, trying to see who will break first. Side by side, positions made and lost. Advantage? Not yet. Green with a leg cramp. Advantage, Hubert Hamerl. But Scott Green knows he can't let Hamerl capitalize on this opportunity. A quick stretch and he fights through the pain and gets back in there. The standard chartered Ironman Korea keeps moving. So does Chang Jae Yao. He's trying to close the gap and move up. Paul Fritchie is steady, but steady doesn't get you first place. He's in fourth and holding. Jason Shortis, not steady. Enough? Time will tell. The nation's challenge has been a close one all day. From the beginning, both the men and women have pushed hard to earn the crown for their country. In the women's race, Czech Republic's Teresa Macelle is first to approach transition. Already planning, the bike shoes come off, preparing for the run ahead. Joanne Bennett is trailing just seconds behind. And Julie Kerwin is within reach as well. The transition is a little more crowded for the women. Teresa off the bike in five hours, 26 minutes. Small mistakes could be costly with Joe Bennett just seconds behind. Julie Kerwin has the experience to make a clean transition and is in a good position to chase. The women's marathon is underway as the transition continues. Teresa Macell makes her move early and gets a jump on Joanne Bennett. Bennett, not in her groove yet, has lost a few seconds while Kerwin watches it unfold. Top athletes competing in the nation's challenge are on the marathon. The relay team, foreseeing is believing, waits patiently. Blind marathoner Henry Wanyuke and his guide Joseph Kabuya await Hein Wagner and Yuri Krikna so they can start the run. Exhausted, the transfer is made with a bike time of 5.21.22. Henry and Joseph are an amazing pair. They are capable of catching the pro triathletes with a 30-minute deficit. But it's not about that. It's about showing what a motivated team can do. And what Henry can do is run. Normally, the Ironman is a 17-hour day, 7 a.m. to midnight. Today has been different, but the challenges of the bike course are the same. Gregory Burns feels it. Far from transition, he's alone. Bill Davis and his guide have had better luck. It's not a mental or a physical problem that has them walking. It's mechanical. Chain fell off. Broke a chain. So we're uh, walking the uphill, kind of taking the downhill, see how far we can coast. 12K from transition, they will make the run cutoff. But at what expense? On this day, Ironman is about running and biking. Some still ride while others pave the path for the rest to follow. Scott Green is on that path alone, for a very good reason. Hubert Hamrell, whom he biked and ran with, is running into trouble. Green has no sympathy. He's alone and first with a comfortable lead. Hamrell is looking at a rough path. A very rough one. He tries to continue.
Shang J. Yao fills in the second place spot. And Paul Fricci will move into third. The day has been eventful and painful. At some point, your body tells you it's over. Professional or not, getting to the finish is the goal. The mind is strong, but the body can just shut down. I'm overheated and I have blood in my urine and yeah, fever, I think. So I think it's an uh, infect, uh, but I try to finish. I will, I will, I will finish, I try to finish, to finish the race, thank you. Hubert will use his mind to help overcome what his body is telling him to do. Hopefully his body will respond. The women's race heats up like the day. Teresa Missell has been slowed in the rolling hills. And there is plenty of motivation for Julie Kerwin. Julie closes within seconds of the lead woman once again. It's been this way all day. In the lead for most of the bike, Joanne Bennett is paying for her early advantage. She falls to third. Conserving energy or struggling? In a groove and running for seeing is believing, Henry Wayuke is cruising as showers roll in again. Even without the swim, you would be hard pressed to say that this hasn't been a tough day. Downpours to humidity so thick it's hard to walk through. The heat carries the merit of a full Ironman. At one point, Jason Shortest thought his day was done. However, he's now made his way into fourth place. Amazing. Paul Fricci doesn't look phased at all in third. And Chang J. Yao has a solid lead over Fricci. Scott Green is in cruise control. No more cramps, no more worries. Teresa Massell, still feeling the heat from Julie Kerwin, presses hard. Kerwin cannot counter. And Joanne Bennett falls further. With the professional athletes deep into the marathon, transition is still a factor for many athletes. The day doesn't end when the first person finishes. It goes on. Alec Riddle heads out on the run. Thomas Ocker did the bike course in 6.34. He'll have plenty to think about on the marathon. Thinking. Bill Davis uses the bike to coast on, not pedal. It helps a little bit. Gregory Burns, confident at this point and gliding down towards the home stretch. Scott Green reaches his final goal. He made it, and his emotions are obvious. Doing most of his damage on the bike, and with that lead, he cruised through the marathon for his first Ironman victory. Holding second and proudly representing Korea, Chang J. Yao. American Paul Fricci finishes third. There was no quit in Jason Shortis, and his reward? Fourth place. The message is clear. And the marathon time for Henry Wayuke is an amazing 3.02.
the scenes believing relay team put in a tremendous effort. Along with Standard Chartered Bank, they raised enough for over 3,300 eyesight operations. With time to spare, Gregory Burns cruises into transition and takes a deep breath. As others enjoy the end of their day, he still has a long way to go. <laughs> Teresa Massell was shadowed all day, but now the sun shines on her alone as she pulls out her first Ironman victory. The joy of finishing an Ironman cannot be measured, only witnessed or experienced. The day is full of so many emotions and feeling, the end is just pure joy. Japanese Sakiko Ito put in a 3.49 marathon to take second. Harumi Masamoto, fellow Japanese competitor, put in a 3.44 to run her way into third. And Julie Kerwin dropped to fourth after giving it her all. The winner of the nation's challenge, Australian Scott Green. With a total time of 8 hours, 9 minutes and 26 seconds. On the women's side, Czech Republic's Teresa Macell won her first Ironman, finishing in 9 hours, 26 minutes and 21 seconds. Gregory Burns spent 40 minutes in T2 recovering from the bike. The bike is over now. 42.2K to go. small percentage of athletes crossing the finish line. At this hour, hundreds are left grinding it out on the marathon. Bill Davis and Jason McFall, feet aching from having to walk the last 12K of the bike, are slow to a walk again. Their pace is not a concern. Finishing is. Gregory Burns is determined to make the finish as the sun lowers on Cheju Island, now providing little evidence of what happened on this day. But for the athletes, the memory is still strong and reinforced by the experience and gratitude shared by everyone involved. Faces are different, emotions the same. After testing the core of who you are, it is impossible to hold back what's inside. Reactions and expressions to this race are as varied as the reasons for why they do it. Hubert Hamrell was a big part of it. Faces convey the feeling of crossing. Unified by the experience, these athletes are Iron Man finishers. Iron Man is a simple reflection of who you are and what you're made of. The thoughts at this hour are endless. Alec Riddle had a difficult day but is on his way to fulfilling a promise to himself and carry the name of his stepson in his head and in his heart every step of the way. Bright lights turn to headlights as the parade continues. Gregory Burns grinds out the hill, up and down a few more times until he'll feel what they feel. A few more strides to go. The trickle of finishers has become more steady. The World Cup football stadium that plays backdrop to the finish comes into view, and the finish line comes to life. Bill Davis and his supporter and brother-in-arms, Jason McFall, will share this memory forever. Tom Ocker came here to create awareness for something so close to his heart he can't stop. An orphanage in Zambia. 
Who would need any more motivation than that? Then, there are the internal reasons to share in this special moment. Some are overwhelmed. Some celebrate. Many will reflect on why they came here in the first place. Tom Ucker, mission accomplished. This is when the party starts and the realization of the accomplishment is acknowledged. The finish line is a place to let it all go. Gregory Burns, polio at the age of one would not slow him down. A man that sets a goal and goes out and accomplishes it. Gregory Burns, an Iron Man at the age of 48. With the finish line nearing, Bill Davis with his guide Jason McFall pick up the pace and run towards the end of this grueling day. His dream realized, even a broken bike could not stop him. Bill Davis, you are an Iron Man. Seventy-eight-year-old Korean Hong Gui Kim finishes in 1529-49. And for Choi Young Kwan, the last finisher, he closes out the race with seconds to go. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com.